I just want to get a sense. How have you been? How has your month been? It's been turbulent uh, just looking at price action so far. <laughs> right. Well, it's definitely a period of adjustment. The year started off with a bang. And, uh, you know, we're going through a progression with the Fed. Uh, of where they're adjusting to the COVID recovery, where the economy was flat on its back. There was a tremendous amount of stimulus, but nobody knew what was going to happen. Nobody knew if there would be a vaccine. Over the course of last year, we basically saw that the fiscal stimulus was effective. People would take that money, they would spend it. It was going to bridge them right. to the other side of this crisis. But it created a spectacular amount of inflation. Now, everybody knows that the fiscal is going to kind of slow down, but nobody knows when the inflation is going to end. And after all of uh, the central banks seeing really low inflation for decades and saying that if they ever got high inflation, they would be able to solve it, now they feel like they're being put to the test. And the politicians are really laying the problem at their feet. And so you're seeing, I think particularly in Powell's case at the Fed, after the renomination, an aggressive switch to we are definitely here and ready to respond. And I, I've never seen them be so forward looking uh, and, and, uh, and explicit in what they're thinking about doing, what their reaction function is going to be as they go through this year. And as Garfield mentioned, it is uh, quite hawkish, uh, quite front loaded in terms of uh, rate hikes so far. And uh, the question is, where are they going to go to from here? What's going to happen? Uh, and is this an opportunity or is this just the beginning? And, and I wanted to get your thoughts on part of that equation, which is quantitative tightening. I think there was a note out of Credit Suisse uh, essentially flagging the, the, the possibility that the Fed simply doesn't roll over or let these bonds mature, but instead sell them. Uh, in that kind of scenario, what would be the major implications uh, in, in your view? Yeah, well, I guess you have to think about uh, you know, what, what evidence do we have, what experience do we have that we can draw on? And in the 2018-2019 right. period, as the roll-off was going, you had a really healthy economy and the markets became extremely agitated. There was a lot of government bond supply. There's a lot of government bond supply now. Uh, it was extremely difficult for the markets. Uh, and uh, eventually, you had functioning uh, problems in the market with the lack of liquidity. The Fed hit uh, a level on reserves before they expected uh, when they had to stop uh, the roll-off. So I think um, it's a bit surprising hmm. uh, that they want to spin all the knobs at one time because the, the experience in the last tightening cycle and in all the tightening cycles that came before it, frankly, they've had a very hard time knowing when they've tightened too much. And given that this recovery is not endogenous, right? This is not like 04 through 06, where you had a booming yeah. economy and they needed to slow it down. This time, it's not clear how much is stimulus, how much inflation is from the supply side. And you are starting to see the market price in. Uh, what seems to be the concern that the Fed might be hiking at a time when inflation might start to moderate a little bit later on this year and when the economy slows uh, with the yield curve, right? It's flat, even, I guess, even close to, to some kind of inversion. Do you think curve inversion might be the swing factor for the Fed to rethink its strategy? Um, I, I think the problem that we've seen in these environments when you have a strong economy is overconfidence at the Fed. And for what reason, I, I don't know. Inflation has really effectively been very low since the mid-80s. Um, but yet every time inflation has gone up, the Fed has overreacted on the tightening side. Uh, I think Bernanke uh, did a good job in the 06 through 08 period when many central bankers wanted to hike, the ECB hiked, and he held off the hawks. I think that's going to be a challenge. Now, I, I think you can see in, in Powell's... Mm. Uh, press conference that he is very agitated, uh, that they feel like maybe they're behind the curve. But I wonder if there's some sense in his mind that last time this didn't go that smoothly. Yes, maybe we have a lot to do, but we're going to be more alert this time while we do it. And so I think what you're alluding to in terms of the markets, the yield curve is flattened. 
The long-term rates have stayed low. The 30-year Treasury yield is quite a bit lower than it was in the spring of last year, even though the front-end yields have risen a lot. And the inflation break-evens, the market's forecast of inflation, have leveled off at levels way below where inflation is running. So the market is pricing in a pretty good odds of a uh, perfect landing, that they're going to achieve a soft landing this time. Yeah. And I think you know Powell has a sense, given what happened last time, um, but you know we're going to have to see how it goes. We're going to find out in real time as we go through this year. Uh, Robert, then wh where should I be focusing in the yield curve then now? I, I know you mentioned that we could be seeing a peak mm -hmm. in yields when it comes to the long end. And do you think that we're going to see a bigger impact from this Fed hawkishness uh, in the U.S.? Or do you look more beyond that? Right. Well, I think there's a huge common factor uh, in interest rate markets, basically among major markets until now. Uh, China has really been a breakaway market. Uh, that when other markets were, were doing fairly well, uh, China was uh, selling off and, and a big laggard. And now other markets have been selling off and the China cycle is going the other way. They're easing and rates are coming down. I think in the long run, this is a great thing. But away from China, from your Australia through, uh, through Europe, Latin America, Eastern Europe, you know, rates have been going up and the rising uh, treasury yield backdrop, I think, has exacerbated uh, some of the sell-offs in, in those markets. I think that in terms of the U.S. yield curve, uh, the back end right now looks like the safest part of the curve because uh, there continues to be a risk, not necessarily that the Fed is actually going to end up hiking to 3%, but if they hike uh, three, four, five, six times this year, and they've fulfilled what right now is the market's forecast of the terminal rate that's approaching 2%, the market will price in another percent. And that'll be very damaging for the front end. I think though, the curve will be inverting at that point. Investors have seen this show before. We're in a highly indebted world where the long rates are staying at lower and lower yeah. levels every cycle. And, uh, and that we're probably near peak levels for the long end of the yield curve at this point not just in the U.S., but around the world.